March Madness is here, and for us that includes the big NHL trade deadline and boys high school hockey tournament, among a dozen other hockey-related events. So, will the Wild make a move? Will they still even make the playoffs? And how can the Buttes fix the Class A AA discourse? All that and more in this week's episode. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Royal Credit Union, Livia, Jim Beam, and Grain Belt. This is Season 5, Episode 218. New drop alert! The Minnesota Wilds celebrate and honor Marc Andre Fleury's 1,000th game, and you can get in on the memorabilia action with an all new exclusive Soda Stick and Hockey Lodge t shirt and hat drop. Grab your piece of history with a one of a kind hat or tee that commemorates one of the greatest tendies in Wild and NHL history. Don't miss out on this fantastic collaboration between Soda Stick and the Hockey Lodge. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? Bar Down Beauties, episode 218. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com. She's Kirsten Kroll, in-house arena host for your Minnesota Wild, PWHL Minnesota, WCHA. Am I missing anything that's coming up as of late? NCHC, I'm sure NCHC. you'll be taking care of too. Yes, all of that good stuff. Uh, it's it's March, March Madness, the very best way, hockey way. It's going to be, I'm pacing myself, man. Yesterday was game one of 17 for me this month, nice. and that's not including everything else going on. And then I'm yeah. slipping away for five full days, so no calls, no text. I'll be on a beach. That's good. It'll be a good energizing boost before you have to get back into work, right? It'll be so needed. Yeah. And then I come home, and there's four games within a day and a half of returning. <laughs> I mean, my spring break is having the kids home, which is a goddamn nightmare, so... Just yeah, that out there. steadfast, mm-hmm. my friend. Thank you. Godspeed to everybody. Uh, March Madness yields, obviously, the state tournament, which happens this week. And Kirsten and I, mm-hmm. both with uh, alma maters in the race, we love to see that. We're going to talk about more about the high school state tournament, the coveted tourney, if you will, coming up in our second segment. But Kirsten, it's also trade deadline week. The Minnesota Wild have two games before that March 8th deadline, exactly 20 games. For the regular season, they still sit eight points back of currently Nashville in that second wild card from the West. We're, we're like, it's done, right? We're giving up wholeheartedly done for playoffs. Yes? I'm not going to give a definitive answer on that. Because Me too. We need, we need definitive answers. I'm not giving a definitive answer. They're way further. They're what? <laughs> As of, I don't, after last night's win, where does that put them? Eight. They were ten points eight back. Points eight out. points back now. They're eight points back. It's still doable. It's still doable. I'm not giving a definitive, definitive answer, but I just I last night as well was a game. It should not have been that close. So although it was a win, I wasn't impressed. If we didn't have Kirill Kaprizov on that team, we wouldn't have won. And that's yeah. embarrassing. The worst team in the league. Yeah, no, they're not good. And both teams coming off a back-to-back. I mean, San Jose also had a back-to-back, and you could see that in the energy. That's exactly how I felt about last night's game. Again, we're recording this on a Monday, so last night's game being that 4-3 victory over the San Jose Sharks. Um, I take that with how the rest of the season's going to go because there are quote-unquote cupcake schedules coming up. Yes, you have St. Louis, and you've got Colorado kind of down the docket, but you face San Jose, I think, two more times. You've got Arizona this week. I mean, teams that are beatable on paper. And yes, you could go yada, yada, any given, but these are games that Minnesota, you're right, should be winning handily. The biggest thing I will take away from it, while the Minnesota Wild might not be back, they might never have been back, even when we claimed them to be. Kirill Kaprizov, 110% back. He scores his third hat trick of the season, has 300 career points, um, sets a franchise record as he does so in record time. Kirsten, we had a lot of questions about Kirill Kaprizov, and understandably, I mean, we had said, is he really the superstar that you need him to be? Is he injured? Is he not? There was just a lot of swirling question marks around Kirill this year. Are you surprised that he has rebounded like he has? Um, And I say that by way of he currently has 29 goals this year, 37 assists, 
in just 55 games. So that's 66 mm-hmm. points in 55 games. Because again, there was a long stretch where Kirill wasn't himself, but now he's rebounded even better than I probably would have expected him to. The criticism through the first half of the season was definitely deserved because he was not playing at the caliber near the caliber we would expect him to. And what we have seen from him in the past, we always knew he was capable of doing more. I'm not surprised to have seen this. I'm surprised, I guess, with how long it took to kind of really see this from him. But the way, especially in San Jose, not in San Jose, against San Jose, (laughs) the way he put the team quite literally on his back, very impressive. Love to see it. This is the time of the year, especially when you need your star players to really step up. And he's like, I'll do it my damn self. And he literally did yesterday. You could see that from his first couple shifts. Like there was just that extra emphasis and that's what's always made Kirill really special to me is not only his elite skill and I think you really saw that shooting accuracy he has like my god those shots against San Jose last night were not only needed but they were so pretty you just you forget about that sometimes because he does so many other things well he skates so well but he outworks everybody I mean he is that grinding type of superstar that you don't see very often and I know I've talked about that so much but I think that can't be reiterated enough and not to mention he has this competitive drive I mean he's not a superstar that is going to not be the first on the ice or last off on the ice he's not he's just going to he has this hunger and drive to win which is why I think it's fair conversation to say how frustrating I'm sure this season is for him right now you know to see not only the slow start by him but by the entire team and to see that inconsistency and you're Mm -hmm. right he finally just kind of said F it I'll do this. We'll we'll help get a win here. We won't completely bury ourselves because a loss for sure would have been that nail in the coffin. It would have been one more nail in the coffin because I'm 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 like halfway closed on the coffin. I think I like you that in liturgy. You tell me I need a decision. You need a decision. It's halfway closed. And I have some words I would like to publicly air out with you on the podcast later. Oh yes, I mean, and nothing personal. Just it, sound, it felt personal. That and your indecisiveness. <laughs> I can't. Like you need to. Pick a pick a lane. I can't and pick stay lanes. In it. I like to move all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we're done. We're done with that. We're picking a lane and <laughs> we're staying in the lane. I'm picking the lane that I'm displeased with Philip Gustafson. It's kind of funny that the goaltenders performed really well when I was very harshly critical of them, right? Not really well, but they certainly have always <clears throat> outperformed my criticisms. And I, I love that. I like to think that maybe that was me getting into their heads. Philip Gustafson last night. Yes, it's hard when you don't see a lot of puck and he saw 15 shots. And again, I'm not trying to just harp on last night's game because I've seen this a couple times now. Philip Gustafson has not quite made a save, hasn't saved a game this year. And we've talked about that again. He is one of the many inconsistent players situations for this inconsistent Minnesota Wild team. But I'm starting to have concerns and starting to have questions because the goals that he was letting in last night should have been stopped. Yes, they're on the rush, but some of those are just kind of lobbed in there, right? They weren't exactly hard shots. I mean, Mikhail Granlin's, I think, was maybe a little bit more difficult, but the other two coming down Nico Sturm, pretty soft. It just, where's your concern with Gus now? And do you want to see more of Flurry on the final stretch, especially considering the circumstances around him, whether it's his final season or not? Do you want to see more Marc-Andre Flurry? I do because I think, I have more belief in him. And I know we talked about that last week, but I still stand in that. I'd rather see Flurry because yes, I agree. I trust him more night in night out than I do Gus with Gus. Very inconsistent all season. We know he'd been battling injury. We had talked about that prior as well, but I thought he was getting back kind of more that upward trajectory. He was playing better last night was discouraging to see. Yeah, it was like, it's, it makes me wonder, and I'd love to hear your take, and I'll give mine too. Was the three year extension a mistake? I am not ready to say it was a mistake, but mm-hmm. I was very skeptical even from the beginning when it was signed. Because, yes, you see him have, when you look at last season, such a good year, deserve deserving of getting a contract. But for the money he got, the contract he did receive, I was skeptical because I was like, we only have a one year look at what he has done. Is it going to be able to be sustainable heading in? And this year it's just been so up and down. I have concerns. 
Yeah. And it's funny because I know going back to the beginning of the year when I did think the goalies were okay, I kind of let them off the hook because I think the defense was performing so abominably. Yeah. The defense has really stepped up. The defense has looked okay, in my opinion. I thought I think you saw Brock Faber have one of his worst games last night. Mm-hmm. Um, he got beat a couple times, and, you know, that's going to happen. He's still a rookie defenseman, and I, I never want to <laughs> negate that and all that he has done this year. He's allowed to have a couple off games as the season wanes on. Uh, but the defense has been noticeably better. So for Gustafson to continue to perform like that, it's very evident, like, okay, this is the problem. You're right, Kirsten. I'm, I'm on the side of you where I don't think – it was a mistake. Three years still to me seems very long, all things considered, um, especially when you could go out and get a goalie. My concern, I guess, would be if you would overpay for a goalie mm-hmm. on the free agency market, right? Because that tends to happen. But yeah, it's just very underwhelming. Philip Gustafson has been very yeah. underwhelming to me this year. Yeah, just a very small sample size. I still trust him more than a lot of goaltenders in the league, but just been disappointed lately. I also want to take a second to talk about defense. We brought it up um, because last night I was paying a lot closer attention to the defense than I normally do. Um, Is it because there were seven out there instead of just six? What'd you say? Is it because they were playing 11 and seven? So there were seven defensemen out there instead of, just I mean, that could have, that could have been it. That could have been it. I don't know. <laughs> um, but no, I noticed last night, I think Brock Faber, he's still, still fantastic, still way exceeded expectations all year long. So I'm not discrediting how well he has been. He's still one of the top defensemen on the team, but lately he's kind of been just, I don't know if it's how much longer this season is in the college season, because let let us not forget, he is just a rookie coming out of a college career. Mm-hmm. And there is something to be said about the grind once you get this late in the season. And especially, too, when he was heavily relied on to play like 30 minutes a night all the time. Um, but lately, he's been falling off just a little bit. Last night, I was disappointed to kind of see how things fell out for him. Jake Middleton a little bit as well. But I also want to give credit where credit's due. John Merrill has been playing so much better lately. So Mm -hmm. I do. We've been critical of him. A lot of people have been critical of him. But I think a moment needs to be taken to just realize how many strides he has taken as of late to be a better defenseman on this team. Yeah, I I would agree with that. With as far as favor goes, I think you see that a lot in rookies because you're right. It's a new sure. adjustment. I think that's just kind of part of it. And when you're a rookie like Brock has taken on those minutes, those heavy minutes against the top lines, I think that's that's mm-hmm. natural. So I I'd agree. It's been it's been a bummer, I guess, to watch because you're like, no, mm-hmm. you wanted to inve- just never have a hiccup at all mm-hmm. in a season. And I think you're starting to see that, like, oh shoot this is kind He's of human here. yes exactly uh so i think that's also but you're right we do need to give credit to john merrill who has been playing much much better than he was that's yeah that's what i'm gonna say with it i'm still i think there's still another level possibly but i also my concern i guess with john merrill is there isn't another level right like maybe this is just kind of what you get which again for a third pair that should be fine but part of me now especially if you know the minnesota wild brass are saying hey this is kind of where we're at. We're probably not going to get into the playoffs. Then I want to see some of those younger guys come up. I want to see yeah. Carson Lambos. I want to see maybe some of those moves made as you, as you can make them, um, you know, and I don't know. I just, I'm curious. Cause I think John Merrill's kind of where he's at, which is fine. It's, it's been good. I think that's a, a testament to Declan Chisholm, but I'd rather see more Mermis or see more, you know, something a little different, but you're right. He's been playing better. I've been underwhelmed by Mermis lately. If I'm going to be honest, I've never been like, Either I'd way, on Merrill him. over Mermis. Interesting. Just, yeah. just the vibes. No, I think Merrill's been playing better. Been better. That's fair. I could see that. I could see that. Uh, I did want to go back to Philip Gustafson and just to re-emphasize our kind of underwhelmsness with him. Three point three zero goals against average. Point eight nine two save percentage in thirty seven games. He's got seventeen wins and two shutouts. Again, a lackluster season this year comparatively whereas last year it was just 2.1 goals against with a 0.931 save percentage and that was however in 39 games so you can see the differences with Gus and this is why maybe that three year seems odd is he's not able to handle the workload that comes with being a top guy so yes the good news is yes Ravel said will likely be able to do that come next year or are you going to go into the year with two goalies that 
can't be a true number one. And I guess I don't know if there is a true number one in goaltending anymore. I do think it's probably more of a 1A, 1B situation on most teams. Yeah, absolutely. I think it needs to be a 1A, 1B situation when you take a look at it. Like, it's a long season. It's a long season. It's a long I'm season. Feeling that I'm putting the emphasis on that because I'm sitting here start of March thinking of all that lies ahead. And I'm like, we're still in it long season we are still in it some players might not still be in it for the minnesota wild however because bill Guerin has some decisions to make he has some big decisions to make again eight points back i think you you sell what you can and recoup what you can brandon duhame's name continues to get floated around as a, a guy and the exciting thing is you could go to a cup contending team. This is the point in time where I don't think a trade is necessarily going to yield a bad position for the Minnesota wild. Right. I think it's going to Mm -hmm. put those players in a better position to go to a contending team because that's, who's going to pay the most for anybody you want. Um, You know, another name that was tossed out my way yesterday, Jake Middleton. How would you feel about, Oh, whoa, that was immediate. No, (laughs) immediate. No. What's, what's the hold on, on Jake Middleton. He has no protection. We love him. No protection, and he's an unrestricted free agent in 25-26. Well, I think he would stay in Minnesota. He would re-sign in Minnesota, whereas Brandon Duhame, I don't think he will. Brandon Duhame, I think, I'm pivoting a second. I promise it will come back around. Brandon Duhame will be an unrestricted free agent at the end of this season. His mm-hmm. name being thrown around because we're going to lose him one way or the other. We should lose him before the trade deadline so we can get something for him. So when Brandon Duhame is traded at the deadline, no one should be shocked. That would just be a smart thing to do on Bill Guerin's end. Um, Circling back to Jake Middleton, won the vibes. Immaculate. (laughs) Defensive player. He's one of the stronger defensive players on our team. Jake Middleton, a national treasure. Protect him at all costs. No. We are keeping him. We are not losing him. No. I could see a call coming about it. $2.45 million salary. Versus Duhame, which I think is just 1.1. 1. 1. Um, I... How many t-shirts is he going to bring with him the next place he goes? <laughs> like, no, I'm I'm concerned. No, we need to keep him. I mean, I, I wouldn't be mad if they kept him, but I, I guess I don't know how I would feel if they moved on from him, too. You know, if, if I would the be right so return. I'd be so upset. I'd be mad. There's no... There's no um, there's no package. There's no deal that you would be like, okay, yes, like a first no. rounder. Okay. No, I don't okay. care. I mean, Jake Middleton for a first rounder sounds like a hell of a steal. Okay. Are we going to get a defenseman first round? <laughs> That's what we would need if we get rid of him. We can't keep put loading up our offense and having our defense suffer. Put Alex Galagansky. We saw the struggle that caused at the start of this season. Then we lost <laughs> Spurgeon for the rest of this year. Jonas Brodeen, when he broke his wrist, like... We've seen the defensive struggles. If we get rid of a defenseman, we need to go all in on the draft and take a high defenseman. Yeah, could do that. What about Vinny Letary? Do you keep Vinny Letary? He's another unprotected asset. I mean, I've been impressed with Vinny Letary, so I guess he is a player. I think he could be replaceable, but I have liked him this season as well. So I don't know, give or take. Like, I guess I'd be indifferent either way. I think you keep Vinny. He's cheap. He's quick. I know um, John Hines has really been proud of him. And he's Lou Nanny's grandkid, so you got to love that. Um, speaking of Lou Nanny. Hockey is a business, Jesse. You just didn't want to keep – you want to keep Jake Middleton for the vibes. <laughs> okay, the vibes are important. <laughs> That's why we picked up Ryan Reeves last season. Am I wrong? That's important. Is it weird that I – you know, as much as I loved Ryan Reeves here, I, watching him on another – I don't like him. Like, sometimes Mm -hmm. I don't like the attitude. Like, I'm just like, oh, gross. Yeah, it's kind of I loved Ryan Reeves here. But I think that's why everyone wants him on his team, because everyone dislikes him once he's not on your team. Like, suddenly his, like, antics and and comments, like, they're not cheeky and fun anymore now that he's not in the wild locker room. Like, I don't know. I'm just kind of like. Agreed. Agreed. Obnoxious. Um, okay. Interesting. I want to toss those names out. I want to let, I want you guys to let me know what you think. Jake Middleton. Is that a thing that you're okay with? Vinny Terry, Is that a thing? Names that haven't been discussed again. I am curious to see. I feel like Brandon Duhame does love it here though. Like, I think he just loves this team. Cause he's, he's kind of looked a little like oh, oh, sad puppy a little bit. Um, I, don't think he, I think he loves the guys. I wouldn't necessarily say he loves Minnesota though. Is it like he, he loves the kid? team. I'm not convinced 
Minnesota is where he wants to end up. Yeah. And you Does know that you guys can you can all be friends still. The San Jose Minnesota hallway last night post game was just jam packed, littered with buddies catching up with buddies. It's uh it was quite the sight to be seen. I heard some hilarious conversations over there. Uh but I mentioned Lou Nanny because we are going to talk state tournament. We're gonna take a quick break. We come back all about the tourney, baby. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here for Livia Weight Control Centers. Who is ready to spring into the warm weather? It's been beautiful outside. I know I've been enjoying it. Hopefully you have too, and it's only going to get better. Spring ready the Livia way and lose up to 10 pounds in your first two weeks. When you join Livia, you'll receive a personalized and doctor-recommended program tailored to your unique goals and lifestyle. Livia's amazing team of registered dietitians and nutritionists will guide you every step of the way, providing you with the tools, support, and motivation that you need to succeed. If you join Livia today, you can get three months absolutely free. I've started my journey a couple months ago and I have loved it. And you know what? There's a new option that you can also include with your nutritional program. And that's Livia Medical. I've been on Livia Medical for the past two weeks to help me break down those biological barriers that can make losing weight so hard. It's helped accelerate my weight loss. I have lost four pounds in just two weeks with the added Livia Medical to my nutritional program. It works for me. It certainly can work for you. Don't forget to get Livia a call at 855-GO-LIVIA or visit Livia.com. Again, first three months, absolutely free. Let them know Jesse Pierce and the Bar Down Beauty sent you. All right, we're back. It is tourney time, as everybody knows here in Minnesota. It is a state holiday starting Wednesday, quarterfinals for Class A, moving all the way up until the weekend championship Saturday at XL Energy Center. It is the best, Kirsten. First of all, do you can you give me your best, like, hi, mom, hair flip for those that are watching? Because obviously the hair is as important as the on-ice performances when it comes I need to the some more room, I think, for this. I didn't have time to practice, so we're yeah. all going to experience this together for the first time. Hey, mom. That was way better than I was going to do. I was just going to yeah. literally. Yeah. Like, all right, now I got to, now I got to bring my A game. You're right. I need some more space here. Hey, mom. I don't okay, know. You can't wink get weird. The... <laughs> F me eyes to your mom. That was creepy, Jesse. If I had a mustache, I would definitely do the mustache thing too. Feel it up. Those kids can't grow a mustache. There's plenty of kids that can grow the mustache. Not well. Hmm. They can do it a little bit. Uh, super excited. We will be at the expo. Kirsten is covering WCAJ this weekend, but I think we'll be bebopping around, saying hi to some people, shaking hands, kissing babies, all that good stuff, only if you want us to. Um, but let's talk about the tournament. First of all, congratulations to Rochester Century slash John, John Marshall. You are a John Marshall Rockets, right? Correct. How does it feel for them to be making the double A tourney doozy of a matchup to kick things off? Uh, with their quarterfinal against Chan Hassan, who upended the undefeated Minnetonka and is coming in at the number two seed for the double A. But how do you feel? Southeast Minnesota's on the rise. Dodge County Wildcats for girls hockey. We saw them in the girls' state. So that was huge. Program on the rise. Um, and then Rochester Century, John Marshall. First time in 15 years Rochester's been represented at the state tournament. So that's just huge in and of itself. Um, so everyone who has criticized Southeast Minnesota saying it's not a hockey area, put some respect on Southeast Minnesota's name because they're coming. How do you think they're going to fare against Chan? And then looking at the rest of double A, you've got to start things off Creighton versus Centennial Elk River versus Edina, who is the number one seed. And then Grand Rapids versus White Bear Lake, number four, who has never in its history, won a first round at the state tournament. Um, As far as Rochester Century, John Marshall, I'm just going to call him Rochester. Can we just call him Rochester? I didn't We're know if that was disrespectful. Okay. Forget about Rochester Mayo until they join the Alliance and make one full team. Yeah. That's what people have, that's a whole other discussion for another time. But until it becomes just one Rochester team, we're just going to keep calling it Rochester. Mm -hmm. Um. I think that it's going to be tough, right? It's going to be tough. A lot of these teams, they don't get to play. Uh, metro schools are good. It's a different beast in the Metro. And uh, as far as Rochester, I think they'll put up a fight, but it's going to be tough. Um, it, I don't want to say like just making the state tournament was a big accomplishment in and of itself, but it is mm -hmm. huge. Like taking big strides forward for the future and years to come, but it's going to be hard. Um, but I think they'll put up a fight. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see it. I was excited. Chan Hassan had a really good season again. Huge victory over Minnetonka. But 
Um, they're a very good team as well as they tend to be that whole section that uh, Tonka and Ian Prairie and all those guys were in something to be heard. Section A, class A, my my little class. You've got New Ulm versus War Road to kick things off on Wednesday with their quarterfinals. Northfield versus St. Cloud Cathedral. Alexandria versus Hermantown, who's the number one. And then Orno versus Mato Midai Zephyrs. The Zephs actually didn't have that great of a year. They play a very heavy double-A schedule, which is naturally going to lead me to the question of A versus double-A, Kirsten. If you could fix the problems of high school hockey in the state, what would you start with? Now, they have done a bunch of different iterations of the state tournament. They had public versus private. People have discussed outstate versus in-state. The big theory, of course, is who's A and who is double A. Now, everybody wants Hermantown to move up. They also now want Matamidi and Orno to move up as well. Now, Class A was originally designed in order, or based upon school enrollment size. So, obviously, Hermantown, a much smaller enrollment size. Matamidi, a smaller enrollment size. Then your White Bears, your Stillwaters, yada, yada. Hill Murray, could be argued that they have a small enrollment size. However, they play up at double A St. Thomas, same situation. Yes, those are private schools. So that brings in a whole slew of other things, but because everybody loves to get so heated come March, come section finals, what would you do to solve the problem? Do you have a solution for the problem? I don't think people are ready for this conversation and it's very, <laughs> it's a very delicate conversation and I am hesitant to make any comments on it because I don't want to sound like I'm talking out of my ass because I haven't, I mean, it's just the typical speculations that people say. Um, so I'm hesitant to say anything about that. But also, Hermantown needs to move up. Like, it's time. Mm -hmm. It's time. You've won enough. And you know what? I used to defend this because Matamid, I started getting swished around in the conversation because they've seen some success as of late. I mean, when I was there, they were awful. and they But they had to go through St. Thomas and Hill Murray to even get anywhere, and that was just never going to happen. But um, I read a nice piece, which actually I guess was published last year by Neil Pionk's dad, Scott, who is a Hermantown guy. And he had brought up the, the contrarian to the class size is open enrollment, right? Matamidi has open enrollment. Hermantown has open enrollment. So you, ki you see kids leaving Denfeld or, you know, what have you to go be at Matamidi. Yes, there's a smaller size, but you're not necessarily diluting the pool it's getting it's still very plump when you have kids relocating right open so enrollment just... brings some interesting conversations exactly along with it. so i'm tiptoeing along the lines of what i wanted to say if you get my gist of yes where I'm but going i think that's it. but that's i think the big that's the big point right like well if it was just kids from Matamidi, then certainly there's no way. Like if you were actually living in Matamidi, and now this doesn't just, it's not secluded to a Minnetonka had a bunch of kids that I don't know if they had real Minnetonka addresses, right? Like mm -hmm. it's happening. It's, it's the way that high school sports have worked, especially when it comes to hockey. Unfortunately, I mean, there's still a very strong pride for community based model and for playing for your team from kid on up. Um, but it definitely, it makes you wonder like what the solution would be you know what i mean For like sure. it's just it's i don't have an answer unfortunately i want matamidi to stay at a i don't think they're ready to go to double a but that's just me like i enjoy seeing them find success at a i don't think they're the hermantown where they're just coming in and they're going to absolutely destroy everybody however they do play a very hefty double a schedule so maybe they would yield well there i don't know i don't know the answer but i would love to hear what you guys think um, um well I'm going to dive back into go this. In. Quick too. I think it's because yeah. since you brought it up now, I'm going to really go in because now yeah. I'm just at the point too. I don't care. You need no. to crack down on the students who don't even live in the area going and playing for other teams. I'm going to flat yeah. out put that. It's like tiptoeing the line of like, I'm not saying recruiting, right? but kids want to go where they're going to win. I yeah. totally understand that, but you need to stay where you are. It is, it's an unfair advantage when you have kids crossing the lines into other school territory just being like well this is a better program better coach i want to go play here and mm -hmm. then they're doing that so this is also a big criticism that i have when you look at southeast minnesota and i talk about rochester just being one rochester team because i got some criticism from people in my comments when i like replied to somebody saying that they're like that's unfair it's a city of 120,000 people blah 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 but you don't have those kids able to go say i want to go play for minnetonka like you had mentioned yeah. like it is one area it is very different very 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 different mm -hmm. so i think you need to find a way to crack down on that that needs to come to an end 
Well, I mean, it feels it's the private, right? Like you can choose to go to a private school, but you're paying to go to the private school, whatever mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. And I think I'll be honest, obviously I'm open enrolling my kids in Madame Mirai, but that's because of the education. I don't know yeah. if they're going to be good. They might suck at sports for all I know. I'm not sending them there to go play hockey by any stretch. In fact, White Bear would probably be a better hockey organization if we're being honest. Um, you know, I think there are obviously circumstances like that, but yeah, when you are sure. deliberately choosing to go and put your kid in a district because you want them to play that sport and you want to build this this pseudo superstar team it's kind of it gives you the ick a little bit right like that's yeah, not how it's it supposed does. to be you go back to mighty it's ducks very, yeah and it's also very high school football in texas yes which you know argument's sake that's what hockey is here right that but is it, what hockey is yes it's very totally much agree. Adam Banks is in the district five, right? He's not, mm -hmm. he's with the ducks. That's where he's supposed to be. He's not with the elite. So it does. It's, I don't think there'll ever be an answer. And I think the way yeah. the high school league handles a lot of these things can be very questionable. I don't think they do a very good mm -hmm. job. Um, just from top to bottom. I mean, talk about fumbling the ball um, at the one yard line when you have section championships that are sold out in minutes and people around like move the venue just move nobody should have and quote unquote nobody should have home ice Hill Murray always gets home ice when they're at Aldrich which seems kind of unfair as well like there should not be a home ice no. advantage to anything um, but yeah I'm excited either way I am excited for the training obviously super excited for my Zephs excited for your Rochester squad and I am excited White Bear was always my second team when I was in high school because they actually were good at hockey, so I'd watch them often. And I'm I'm excited to see if the curse is lift. I think it's been like 19 first round exits. They make it if they beat Hill Murray. I always joked with my friends that you just wasted a spot because you're gonna lose in the first round anyway. And hey, I do the like Toronto Maple round. Leafs made it out of the first round last year. Anything's possible. <laughs> Anything's possible. Goal Bears. We'll see. We'll see. It's just the orange. That's going to be a very orange game. That's an eight o'clock game. And it's Grand Rapids orange versus White Bear orange. And I think Rapids is like black and orange as well. So I'm curious, how are those students going to do? Because that's really what the tournament's all about, is what the students can make of the uh, the event. I don't love the Hawaiian themes. Like, I'd rather see school <sighs> colors, right? I don't. Or like the American whole, theme. Can we, can we bookmark this conversation? Because I want to give it its time. I yeah. hate theme nights in sports. I hate yeah. them. Like, the whiteouts, I hate the everyone please wear red to the game hate it like when i ugh, like and then you go into hawaiian hunting all that i hate all of it i don't mind the whiteouts i don't mind like i think those can be kind of cool i don't yeah like i don't love the hawaiian theme night because it doesn't have anything to do with the sport that's happening i get it because it's probably like it unifies mm -hmm. your little subsect of students right like hey we're all gonna look the same so people know that we're cheering for this but then that's why i like the colors right then like all right so gold out for matamida like go everyone wear yellow like y'all have yellow see i don't like that either i want to wear what i have i want to wear my whatever it is sporting team it's complicating it when you're like everyone wear this one color well what if i don't have I, what if i have 50 items of my team except for that one I'm, that happened to me at the Gophers homecoming. Not, it wasn't homecoming <laughs> that happened to me at the Gophers home opener this year when they played Nebraska. Was they were like, out? everyone, it's a gold out. Well, I had a maroon t-shirt. So I went in my maroon t-shirt and everyone's like, didn't you get the memo? And I was like, yeah, I did. And I don't care. F your memo. Like I want to wear did they what let I you have. In, or did they turn you around? Like you got to get out of here. No, it was not. fine. I had great <laughs> seats. I had a lot of fun, but I was annoyed. It's like, I'm going to wear what I want to wear. See, I'm a sucker for theme nights. I love Ugh. dressing up. I am, um, you know me. If it gives me an excuse to go buy a new shirt, then like, hell yeah, I'm in. No, <laughs> I'm very passionate about this subject. I Eliminate see theme that. night. I I enjoy that. I mean, for 10:43 on a Monday morning, we're fired up. But you know what? Doesn't I get take it, though. much for me. <laughs> it makes sense. I don't totally disagree, but I don't mind. I like them. I like the again only the colors. I don't like the silly the. It's funny. I like the dress up on like party nights, but like student sections, I don't like the th the themes. I just don't like it. I don't like the America theme and I don't like the Hawaiian theme. It bothers me. Mm. Um, but the theme, as we do each and every episode, wild week ahead. We're going to circle back one more time to your Minnesota wild. Kirsten, they are on the road for back to backs against Arizona and Colorado. That sounds like a nightmare. And then they come back to play the Nashville Predators on Sunday at home, 2 30. And then have another home game next Tuesday against the Coyotes. Let's include that one too. Why not? So how do you think they're going to do in this four game stretch uh, of two home, two away? Uh, two and two. 
I think you okay. take the games against Arizona, Nashville, Colorado. It's not going to happen. It's a okay. pipe dream at this point. I've been less than impressed when they play playoff caliber teams. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to go 1-3-0 and because they're going to drop one game to Arizona because why not? Mm. I yeah. was on the fence with that. Yeah, it just seems suitable. Watch, they're probably going to win them all and be like, we're still in the hunt. They might. They might. Honestly, I hope they do. I want to you know, win. Yeah. I. As we get closer, as we talk about like, ah, it's playoffs. Everybody does enjoy going to the playoffs, though, you know? I want to win. I get paid for more games that they play. It's a little longer. I get to hang out with my friends. <laughs> hang out with our friends. I get fed. <laughs> See, I don't get any of that, but like I get to be there, which is nice. I get a towel up there for you. That's true. I mean, it was t chips and dip last night, which I love mm. me the chips and dip. Have you, have you experienced? I'm not in the press box. <laughs> I didn't know if you've ever experienced. They have it sometimes for like other events too. It's like, Again, a, I'm yeah. never up there. Well, I see you up there sometimes. Sneak up there one if day. If I forget, I'll bring, like, down. I'll bring some down. If I like need new batteries in a hurry, sometimes I'll run back up there. I'll bring you some, but it's just, Thank it's you. a simple kettle chip with they've got three different dips i think one's like an onion one's a garlic and i don't know what the other one is but they're so good like don't it's forget so about good. our friends down at 123 it's always yeah good. so good I'll, I'll bring you next time they got something good thank I'll you you up you're welcome that's what i'll do for you uh what we're gonna do for you guys is we're gonna end this episode and that's gonna do it for this week again shout out to talk north livia soda stick um Grain Belt, Royal Credit Union, and Jim Beam. As always, you guys as well appreciate every single one of you. Like I said, you'll see us buzzing around probably at the tournament, at least me, while Kirsten's off working. I call that work though, right? Buzzing around's working, kind of. It depends. It depends. Um, I'm going to sneeze real quick, so hold. <laughs> that was real. That's how my what sneeze was that? You sounded. I know. We survived. We made it through. I knew it was coming. I was going to hold it, but didn't quite make it. But that's going to close us out. Enjoy that. Enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, stay tuned. If there are dead trades, we will let you know. So make sure you're following all of our social media, subscribing, rating, sharing, all the good stuff. We appreciate you. Have a good rest of your week. Bye. Near, 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 near.